Your next studio project in Art 30 involves a series of work, but a series of work in a particular style. A series of work means that you're going to create more than one piece of art, but the goal is to do so in a consistent manner so that you can work even what get one step closer to developing your own personal style. This assignment is based on these two outcomes from the program of studies. Recording the development of visual ideas in a consistent manner is a part of developing a personal style. So that's kind of the idea of using the same style for each of the artworks in the series. That, that's that concept of consistent manner. Okay, and then the second outcome just pertains to having a body of work that you'll display uh, and it, hopefully in doing so, you are not only revealing your own tendencies of working in a style, but maybe even revealing things about yourself, because isn't it true that art is like that? Art is uh, an expression of, of ourselves, really, which is why it's such an intimate and special experience to, to make art. So here's the specific details of the uh, studio project complete at least one artwork from any three of the following categories okay so minimum is three artworks and that's all that's expected but i didn't want to limit students by saying you can you should only make three pieces of art because these three pieces of art don't each of them doesn't have to be like a three week long project like, for instance, you might work on a drawing for one or two classes, and then that's it. But it's in a specific style, and it's a part of your series of work, part of, part of your body of work. So it's hard to say how long this whole studio project would, will take. But even if you create little studies, you know, kind of experimental pieces of art, but they're in the style that you're choosing to work in, then you should save those because that can become part of this body of work. But the minimum is three. And what you're looking at here in the smaller font are categories that artists have used over time to make statements about the human experience and create art. So I'm suggesting that you draw from those categories. If you have ideas, of your own that, that maybe don't fall into these categories, just talk to me about it, about your ideas, and I'm sure they'll be fine. So you might even want to take a, a photo of this slide on your phone so that you can just have a quick reference of those categories. Now, let's talk a little bit more about your, the style. So sometimes it's referred to as treatment of subject matter, or at least that's a good way to approach understanding what we mean by style. Treatment of subject matter basically comes down to how imagery is portrayed. So that involves things like stylistic tendencies. So like sometimes artists purposely use line, like outlines, like we see around the ball player's head in the on the image in, in the right on the right side of the screen here and then we also see contour lines inside that baseball player's body and those contour lines are describing the shadows and highlights that are made by the form of the fabric now on the other hand the artist that created the painting on the left chose not to use any outlines that artist approached th that artwork more realistically depicting the baseball player with realistic proportions and using value contrast to differentiate shape instead of outlines so handling so like how proportions are handled influences style which is kind of to say like that's levels of abstraction so like the image on the right is more abstract the, had that artist worked in a more abstract style than the artist on the left. 
here's another example. This is all, these are all pertaining to the same subject, mountains. But we see four different styles ranging from very realistic to gestural and kind of like a quick sketch in that top right hand corner there. And then something that the one at the bottom kind of resembles some more of a graphic design stylistic approach. But the point is, is that the subject matter is the same in each example. And here again, same subject matter, but two very different styles. So that's what you are tasked with doing is to choose a style or at least to start exploring one, but then stick with it through all of your pieces. I really want to emphasize what we mean by style. So here's three more examples. But I, another thing about these examples is look at that one in the middle. So th there's a piece of art that probably could be done in like an hour, right? Or, you know, a couple art classes, because that's kind of the nature of it. It's very, it has a quick and gestural appearance where we see the texture of the watercolor paint and we see lines created with ink, which add energy and, and help establish a specific mood. Compare that to the analytical style on the left, a graphite drawing like that one would take hours and hours to render. And so this is what I was referring to when I said that some of your three projects will take longer than others. And that's okay. Here's an example of a, a landscape painting that we could say is realistic in terms of proportion and atmospheric perspective, but it, the artist wasn't just trying to reproduce a photo because look at the colors. Obviously, there's a specific color scheme being used, and those may or may not be the colors that were in the actual real scene when the artist was looking out at this cityscape. But And here, here's another interesting landscape because... The proportions are still realistic on the human and on the buildings, but yet the artwork has a real flat look because the colors are flat and the artist didn't use value gradations like this artist did. So just two more examples of style, different styles. Here is that same concept applied to portraiture where we have a very abstract cubist style on the left, a more realistic style in the center, but with more with quite a bit of expression because of how the paint was applied, where we can actually see brush strokes. And then look at that acrylic painting on the right. We don't see any brush strokes in that example because the artist refined the mark making to a point where the brush strokes are not really visible because the artist wanted that the outcome to look quite realistic, almost photorealistic. And then here's two abstract pieces, but the point I want to make here is that, again, this idea of levels of abstraction. So the example on the left is abstract in terms of the flat silhouette appearance of the baseball player, but yet the proportions of the baseball player are still realistic, as opposed to the one on the right where it's very stylized. So I, I would say that's even more abstract. It's totally fine to work three dimensionally with this studio project. And so here's some examples of different styles pertaining to three dimensional art. And of course we see different mediums be, being used here too, like driftwood on the far right versus something that looks like bronze on the far left. So feel free to work three-dimensionally. And you can even do a little bit of both, like maybe 2D and 3D. Uh, this slide is just pointing out that sometimes the, the style that an artist works in is influenced by what they're able to do. You know, like going back to this one. So if an artist isn't 
able to because they don't have the experience or technical training to paint you know photorealistically then maybe the artist wouldn't attempt a style like we see on the far right side there uh, or maybe an artist is really into working digitally and so i guess i could go back to this one for that like that example to me looks like it's something that was probably done with digital media as a compared to this one which looks more like traditional acrylic or oil paint or something like that the last thing i want to say about style is that whatever style that you choose it's important that you 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 maintain that style throughout the whole artwork and that's so that the artwork has a sense of connectedness and wholeness, which we refer to as unity. Before you get started on your first of the three artworks, I want to point out that in Schoology, there's a preliminary project plan. And this needs to be completed for each of the three artworks and there's actually three there's actually two steps to the pre preliminary project plan so that's that means six components in total so here i am in schoology your art 30 course is right here. Right under the fine art scholarship post is the series and style assignment, which is where you'd find this video. But underneath that, there are many posts, preliminary project plan A, part one, A part two, B part one, B part two, and so on. So that's because the preliminary project plan is broken into two parts, part one and part two. But you're expected to complete a preliminary project plan for each of the three artworks that you are completing in your series. So two parts times three projects is six. Now, don't worry, it's not a lot of work. The preliminary project plan will not take you long to do the first part of each of them involves answering some questions but they're simple questions like for instance what is the topic of your artwork so that could be like a one word or like a few word answer what statement do you intend for your artwork to make so like these are important questions that you as the artist have to consider before you actually start creating art so that in the end your artwork can be successful based on the statement that you wanted to make and even like the vision that you have for it so you're going to complete part one before you even begin the artwork but then part two involves all the planning that you're going to do and that is reflected in your sketchbook so when you look at a, a part two example you'll see images of like concept webs and thumbnail sketches even notes that an artist may, might drop down this slide shows the progression from a very loose and rough spot illustration to a more refined compositional and value plan to the actual finished product so part two of your preliminary project plan is reflected in your sketchbook or on sketchbook paper if you're in art 30 i really encourage you to get a sketchbook you might even have one at home that you can bring to school because you're going to do a lot of little studies and planning in the sketchbook and then ultimately what you're going to do is take a photo of one page of your sketchbook to represent your preliminary project plan even though it might encompass more pages in your sketchbook. But one is all I'm asking you to turn in, and that's what this blank slide is in the preliminary project plan, Google Slides file. That's just where you're going to insert the photo that you take from your sketchbook, demonstrating that you've went through that creative process that's involved in the preliminary project plan. 
Okay, so that's why in Schoology there's all those posts, but like I said, don't don't panic. It's not a lot of work, and you just do one at a time. So in other words, if you're ready to start your first of the three artworks in the series, you should get going with the preliminary project plan part one, and then move on to preliminary project plan part two. So that would be for the, the A. So there's A, B, C because you're doing three artworks in the series. <laughs> I hope this isn't too confusing, but if it is, you know, of course, you're here in class with me. I'll help you out with it. Okay, so have fun with this project. You have lots of freedom. Uh, but now, speaking of that, the last thing I'll say, I'll make this quick. When you're choosing from these categories, if you're really stuck for a conceptual idea and you just, you know, you have no ideas for on what to do, then talk to me because I have a lot of ready-made projects that I've used throughout, the, you know, the last 15 years or more with high school students. And these are ready-made projects that I would typically give to a, a class, like an Art 30 class. In this case, though, I'm, I'm giving you the freedom to take your artwork in the, any direction that you want. But if you need a little bit more direction, you need some parameters and you need like a prompt, then talk to me and I'll give you one. And I even have prompts that are that fall into these categories. Like if you're interested in landscape, then I can give you a little bit of direction and actually give you like a landscape project to do. Or I have a really fun project with food. Uh, or like I have a lot of material uh, in the category of portraiture. So I'll help you along if you need if you need guidance. But otherwise, it's okay to just work independently and go in your own direction. So have fun with that and remember that I'm here to help.